What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. And if you've seen the previous video, you would have seen that uh, we did a little portrait shoot. Me and Christina went for a little walk with the plan to get a collection of portraits of her to help me improve my portraits and just to get a nice collection of photos of Christina. And there was a comment on that video where someone said that they enjoyed how I had put in the before and after of the photo so they could see the original photo and then the final result after I had done an edit. And this is something that I actually like myself when I'm watching other photographers' videos because first of all, it's quite satisfying seeing uh, the little wipe across and the edit and seeing the final result, but also because it kind of lets you see what's actually going on in camera, what the photographer was seeing at the time and how they then can transform that into a final photo. It essentially kind of helps you to learn how editing works or learn editing techniques and stuff like that. So I did a quick poll on the community tab to see if you guys would be interested in a how I edit portraits video and most of you voted for yes. A few people didn't want to see it but the vast majority wins so here I am and I plan on doing a quick, hopefully quick, little tutorial video to show you my process of how I edited those portraits and other portraits that I've took before. So let's jump into Lightroom and I'll run you through the process of how I edited a few of those portrait shots. Okay, so as I'm sure you're all aware, lighting is key with all types of photography. And even though it was cloudy on this day, there was sunlight and it was coming and going, but the light cloud above us was acting as a nice big diffuser for the light, which gives some really even light and it was shining pretty nicely on Christina's face in this photo. I know it's kind of hard to tell because it's it looks a little bit underexposed, but I was exposing uh, more so for the sky in the background just because I didn't want to lose all the detail in the clouds. But this is the photo straight out of camera. And first of all, what I'm going to do just to adjust things is a little crop. I'm going to do five by seven on this one and just sort of center Christina a little more. She doesn't need to be dead center, but something like that I think looks pretty good. And normally to start all my edits, what I do is I click on the auto tab, which is pretty simple, but it normally gets me to a nice starting point. And as you can see with this one, it worked pretty well. Most of the time it does. Um, I always adjust things a little bit after, but it looks pretty good to me right off the bat. And then the next thing that I normally do is either the preset or slightly adjust the white balance. It was cloudy, so I'm just gonna click the cloudy option, which looks pretty good to me. And then the preset I'm gonna use for this one and the preset that I used for all the photos on the first day in this video is our Greenwood preset right here, which right off the bat, I normally always like. It's a little bit strong at times, especially when I've just let Lightroom auto adjust everything. By the way, if you like the look of the edits we do with all our photos, um, you can grab the presets. The link is in the description below. It goes a long way to supporting us and the channel and is always much appreciated. So the presets gets the colors and everything where I like them. The next thing I do is just balance out the contrast, highlights, shadows, etc. And it's definitely a little bit too contrasty. So I'm gonna just raise the shadows a little bit. I'm also going to decrease the dehaze slider a little bit and I'm also going to lower the clarity a little bit more to minus 20 and that looks pretty good. I might just lower the highlights a little bit more and then bring the whites down to maybe minus 18. Okay, so now that I've got the general photo pretty well balanced, I like the colors. The next thing I would do is use some masks just to make Christina pop a little bit more and just adjust things on her specifically without adjusting the background. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to the masking tool and then select people. Lightroom really makes this so quick and easy now because it's perfectly selected Christina, whereas previously I would have had to go in and draw around her myself, which was a little bit of a process. And um, for this first adjustment, I'm just gonna select everything on Christina and I'm gonna just slightly increase the highlights. You can see it just kind of makes her pop out a little bit more from the background. So something like that. And when I'm making these adjustments, I'm kind of focusing more on her body and not too much her face because I'm gonna do a specific mask for her face as well. So something like that I think looks pretty good. 
And then I'm gonna create another mask and this time I'm gonna select just her face. And this time I'm going to use one of the presets that's in Lightroom, Soften Skin Light. And I think this is actually a little bit too heavy. So what I come in and do is just adjust these to, I think minus 10 works for me, especially from this distance. And then once again, I'm just going to increase the highlights just a little bit, maybe like five, just to make Christina's face pop out a little bit more. And I'm also gonna add a quick adjustment to her legs because Christina was complaining that her legs looked quite white in the photo. Don't tell her I said that, but I'm just gonna adjust her legs, just add a little bit of warmth back into her legs to sort of match her um, face skin tone. And the body skin selects her legs and a little bit of her hand as well, which will work nicely. And all I'm gonna do is just up the temperature by five and then maybe up the saturation by like 10. And that just adds a little bit of color in and matches the skin tones a little bit better. The next thing I'm gonna do, which is very subtle, is I'm gonna do another mask and I'm gonna select Christina's hair and I'm just gonna soften it a little bit and sort of add a little bit of highlights, which again, just kind of makes it pop out a little bit more from the background, I think. So let's just pick her hair and then I'll make those adjustments. So just increase the highlights a little bit, maybe increase the contrast a little bit, and add a little bit of saturation in. And I also like to lower the clarity a little bit. Okay, so next I'm gonna add a mask and just brighten up Christina's eyes a little bit. I know this is quite a far away portrait, but Adding a little bit of brightness to the whites of the eyes and the eyes in general just helps a little bit, I think, with portraits. Um, more so when they're close up, but I still like to do it on pretty much all portraits anyway. And normally what I do is I just use the Lightroom Iris Enhance and normally I lower it to about 0.15 and then I just put the saturation back to normal and then I might do another one just for the pupils. Again, this is probably sort of pointless from this distance, but I still like to do it anyway. It's kind of a habit thing more than anything. And even though you can just about see a little bit of her teeth, I'm gonna add another mask and just add a little bit of teeth whitening as well. The Lightroom tends to overdo it a little bit, so I normally um, bring things back, something like that. And that is pretty much it. The only other thing I like to do sometimes is just add a little linear gradient at the bottom here, and just drag it out so it, it fades nicely. And then I just lower the highlights Bring the exposure down a little bit. That might be a little bit too much. Something like that, which just kind of draws your eye more up to Christina's face and not her feet. And the final thing would just be to slightly tweak the sky. I mean, it looks pretty good. I might just decrease the highlights a little bit to bring back a little bit of detail, but then also increase the whites to make sure things are bright. And I might just, uh, a little bit of blue to the sky as well. But that is the final result and I think it's pretty close to the original edit that I done. So that's the final result and you can see the before and after. It looks quite drastic just because the sky was quite bright and I'm exposing for the sky. Um, but that is the final result before, after. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that and I love how these photos turned out. Okay, so instead of going through all the steps for each photo, I'm gonna try and speed this up a little bit because it can get a little bit boring. So here is another photo. Again, if you've seen the video, you would have seen this one. This is the original photo and this is the final edit out of Lightroom. So the settings and everything for this are generally the same. I've used the same preset and most of the settings are pretty close to the previous photo. 
with a few extra things. So I have added a vignette on this one just because I wanted to draw the attention to Christina's face. And here are the masks that I've used. So I'll just turn them all off and then turn them back on. It's the same masks I used for the previous video. They're just maybe a little bit more obvious in this one because it's so close. So that's with the masks off. And that's with the masks on. I did make a slightly different adjustment on this one to adjust the color of the trees around Christina, just because I thought when I made them a little bit bluer, sort of on the bluer side, um, that it contrasted nicely with the skin. So once again, with no masks, you can see the hair and Christina's skin tone and stuff smoothing out and just looking nicer. And her eyes and stuff just pop a little bit more. And then one other thing that I did on this one was I took it into Photoshop and fix the um, trees here, which was kind of a gap in the trees on the left hand side. And I just sort of filled it in so it looks a lot nicer. Onto this next photo, I really like how this one turned out. Christina was sitting in the grass. This is the before photo. And with pretty much all the same sort of settings, this is the after. Once again, I'll show you the masks turned on and off. So this one was very bright and I was going for that brighter look and um, the sun was a lot brighter at this time. So slightly different looking in the first photos, even though it's the, it's the same preset used. Um, but I made the adjustments just to dull down the grass a little bit and make Christina sort of pop out a little bit more. And just make the skin tones look really nice as well. On some of these, I did zoom in a little bit more and just do some subtle little healing on the skin as well, just to remove any little blemishes or anything. Again, don't tell Christina I said that. Um, but in portrait, it's, it's necessary pretty much all the time because of the way the light hits your face and stuff, um, just smoothing things out. And yeah, I do that in all portraits, just using the um, spot healing brush just a small little dot and I don't go overboard and um, just because I, I don't think it's necessary for my photos but yeah I'll just quickly show you this one from the second day where I actually used a different preset but again all the same sort of things apply and they apply to pretty much every portrait photo that I take so again this one was shot at golden hour and the light was nicely diffused behind the cloud which was adding a nice glow to Christina's face so this is the before and this is the after. And for this one, I used our spring evening portrait preset. Um, between the spring evening portrait and the greenwood, they would be the two that I use most for portraits. So once again, I'll show you it with all the masks turned off. Just adjusting the brightness of the tree in the foreground, brightening up the sky a little bit, and just sort of flattening out the um, highlights on Christina's face, just so it's not a little bit too bright. I also took a portrait version of this one. There's the before, there's the after. I think I also adjusted Christina's skin tone a little bit in this one, but that's pretty much it. That is my process for editing portraits and it's the pretty much the same process for every portrait I take. Um, things get a little bit more detailed the closer up the portrait is obviously with smoothing out skin tones and doing a little bit of healing and stuff like that with the healing, with the spot removal brush. But um, Pretty much the same for all my portraits. So yeah, that is pretty much my entire process when it comes to editing portraits. I don't know if you were expecting more detail or less, but that's the um, process that I found works really nicely and gets the results that I like. Um, I know a lot of people will go into a lot more detail specifically when it comes to um, like spot healing and stuff on the skin. I think it's a little bit overboard at times and when you're looking at a photo, you don't really notice it, um, especially if you're posting it to Instagram and stuff. But yeah, that's my process. Hopefully it was helpful to some of you. Hopefully you learned something from that. Um, it's pretty much the same for every portrait, like I said. Hopefully you like the look of the presets as well. If you do and you would like to support the channel by grabbing the presets for yourself, the link is in the description below. I don't know if this was short or long. Um, that screen recording seemed quite long, so I'm going to stop here. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. As we always say, take it easy. Don't be a stranger. We've got a very fun trip coming up next week, by the way. Stay tuned for that. Had to order myself some film too. I'm low on 35 mil.
Should be fun though. Heading back to a country we have been to. Any guesses? 